What's up, Hill School? Welcome to the ninth edition of the critically acclaimed television series, Hill TV. I'm blessed to be your anchor this evening, filling in for Barbara Walters. On the show, we've got the following segments. Words with Sass. iPads in the classroom with Mr. Jones. Rams of the week. And finally, 125th anniversary of Hill vs. Lawrenceville in baseball. Hello, and welcome back to Words of the Week with Marcus Sass. I am, in fact, Marcus Sass, if that wasn't already abundantly clear. This week's Word of the Week is Frigatrixidexophobia, which is a fear of Friday the 13th. To use this word in a sentence, I might say, if I had Frigatrixidexophobia, when going to watch the movie Friday the 13th, I would bring along an ample supply of adult diapers. Well, I think that there are a number of benefits to using the iPad in the classroom. Uh, one of the principal benefits, I think, is just simply its size. Uh, it weighs just a few ounces, uh, so it's a much more portable device than uh, the laptops that have been used here at the Hill School in the past few years. I also like to refer to it as a Swiss Army knife of sorts because it really combines a lot of functionality in a single device. You've got a touch screen uh, in the cellular models, you pick up a GPS, you have uh, a front and rear facing camera, and, and granted some laptops will have front and rear facing cameras, but it's a little more difficult to hold up a laptop and try to position it just right to get the, the right shot. Uh, so uh, uh, obviously an audio recording device, so I think there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of different functionality combined into a very compact package. Uh, teachers have a couple of different apps that, they, uh, that, they're, that are already in use here at Hill. One is Explain Everything. This, uh, our math department is using that to actually record some of the lecture material so that students can actually watch that outside of class. Uh, when we start talking about uh, education and, and, and how education is changing. One of the interesting concepts is the idea of a flipped classroom. Uh, in the normal model, the teacher assigns you the homework and you go home to do the homework, but you're without the teacher, so if you have a question to ask, there's nobody to ask. In the flipped classroom, what was homework becomes classwork and vice versa. So you go home, you watch the video, where you have the ability to rewind it, fast forward it, repeated, et cetera, et cetera. And in the classroom, you do what was traditionally homework. So you have the benefit of the actual instructor who can help, uh, help, help, you, help step you through those problems. Uh, another app that is in use here on campus is iTunes U. Uh, and the benefit to that really is that it's a consolidated place to go for all of your classroom stuff. Teachers are also ex uh, experimenting with using eClicker, which is an interactive response system. So the teacher can pose a, a question to the class and, and get a quick gauge of where the students are on the material and depending upon the answer they might skip on or skip over the material or if the response is showing that students don't have a good grasp on the material then it's pretty easy to retool the day's lecture and, and spend a little time, a little more time focusing on topics that students are struggling with. I don't think that iPads are necessarily any more of a distraction than any other piece of technology that's been used in the past. Uh, even with the one-to-one -one laptop program, you've had to deal with students searching on the internet and, and there are obviously computer games on uh, a, a normal traditional PC. So I don't know that I see the distraction as, as being a particular concern. Uh, I, I would suspect that teachers will probably go to the practices that they've always used in, to, in terms of helping keep kids stay focused in the classroom. Uh, a simple one is, is just to 
line up all the screens where you as the instructor can see it and, and thereby notice, oh, well, uh, John is not focusing on his work, let me say something to him. So uh, I don't know that anything is particularly necessary in terms of, of controlling the distraction on the iPad. Jeff Armstrong, Glenmore, PA, JV baseball hurler, shortstop, and an opposing team pitcher's nightmare. His patience at the plate, often walking two or three times a game, frustrates pitchers into wanting to hit themselves with a bat. According to his coaches, Jeff's willingness and enthusiasm has set a real positive tone for all of the players. Yes. Okay, just look right at the Charlotte camera. Jameson, fifth form, Spring City, PA, JV girls lax. Charlotte has found her niche in the defensive midfield. She's got the skills to score and run the offense and the athleticism and defensive skills to run the midfield. Charlotte led the run to beat Blair and according to her coaches, does a lot of the little things you need in games and in practice and it has made a difference in the overall play of the game. Cecilia Young, Fairhaven, New Jersey, varsity girls lax. Cecilia led the girls lacrosse team in a 16 to nine smothering of Blair Academy. She rendered Blair's leading attacker scoreless and led the offensive unit to a 7-1 lead at the half. In the words of her coaches, she's got a determination to succeed. <laughs> Kim Breeding, 6th form, Collegeville, PA. Peyton Miles, 3rd form, Limerick, PA. Girls track. Shining stars of the girls track team, these ladies ran the 800 and 4x800 in the meet against the Lame Larrys. Kim ran an excellent second leg, and Peyton had an Olympic-like moment outrunning a Larry in the last few meters of a race to gain a first place finish. Start it. What up, baby? <laughs> And now, please welcome Nana Ousu and turn your attention to the home plate area as Nanu honors America with the singing of our national anthem. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes had bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched hey, this time last year i had the privilege of honoring my predecessor and great friend jim finn on this field in honor of his long service to the school and to the game and today I have the high privilege of doing that for our friend at lawrenceville and longtime coaching colleague Champ Atley, who this year has been honored for his 35th year of coaching. Champ, congrats. Ooh.